Hey guys, welcome to another episode. So today I wanted to show you my PSP collection. I think it's one of the most robust ones I have and as I've been reviewing for Blistered Thumbs I've been the PSP guy and I've kind of accrued a lot of PSP games and uh, I don't know, I think I got a good grasp on the system and what it's all about and some of the best games. So I'm going to show you all of these and then my next video I'm going to do a, my top 10 favorite PSP games of all time. Now I know that there's more to come and there's more that I haven't played but I feel like I've got a good grasp and there's probably not going to be any game out there that's really going to sway my opinion one way or another. So I'm going to go through these real quick give you quick overview of what they're like and what I thought of them. So first one, uh, Third Birthday, I think you heard me rant about this a lot, did not like it. It's the third game in the Parasite Eve series. It was a disappointment to me. I, it's one of the worst rated games I've ever done for a review. I gave it a 5 out of 10, which it was, it was terrible. I don't like it. Um, yeah, simple as that. Uh, Blaze Blue Continuing Shift 2. I talked about this in my last video. It's Blaze Blue on the PSP. If you like Blaze Blue, you're gonna like it. I thought it was not bad. 7 out of 10. This is a game that Pete Doerr recommended to me, and I haven't played a lot of it, but what I've played so far I've really enjoyed, and that's Brave Story New Traveler. I'm gonna hold it sideways because the cover's weird. Um, so it's kind of got like a Precious Moments graphic style to it, if that makes any sense. It's like if Bre the guys from Precious Moments and girls, I suppose, made an RPG, like this is what it would look like. Um, it's very cool, it's turn-based, um, like the music, like the graphical style, it's fun, relatively easy. Uh, like I said, I would love to get more into it, I would definitely recommend it, it's one of the best RPGs I've played on the PSP, or in this generation of gaming for that matter. Um, next, uh, Castlevania Dracula X Chronicles, so this is a compilation of uh, Symphony of the Night and uh, Castlevania Rondo of Blood, the remake. Um, Rondo of Blood is a little difficult, the jumping is kind of weird. Basically, I bought this game for Symphony of the Night. At one point, I got, I unlocked Symphony of the Night and Rondo of Blood and just stopped playing and started playing Symphony of the Night. And that was really my first time ever playing Symphony of the Night. Didn't play it on the PlayStation 1. Really enjoyed it. Ton of fun. Um, this, I'm sure this is a really good value at this point. Um, you can get a, two great games for probably less than $20. So if you have a PSP and you don't have this game, this is an absolute must have. Um, next, this is the game, this is the reason I bought a PSP. There were no must-have titles when it launched, and when I heard about this game, I'm like, I gotta get it. Um, and that's Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII. That, it's an action RPG. Uh, it's a prequel to Final Fantasy VII. It tells the story of Zack uh, and how he started in um, Shinra, and it gives a little bit of the backstory of Cloud. You hear more about Sephiroth and uh, the Turks and a couple different things. And I'm just a huge Final Fantasy VII fan. As you can see, here's my little shrine to it. Um, and I thought it was great. Um, yeah, what else is there to say? If you don't have it, you gotta get it. I'm just gonna link these together because they're more or less the same game. Uh, that is Dissidia and Dissidia Duodecim. Uh, the second one is much better. It has the story from the first one and it's got new characters. It's updated. You have assist characters. So if you have not played either of these games yet, I recommend getting Duodecim. It's got, it's literally this game packed into it. Um, and it's, it's a lot of fun. I've dumped so many hours into it. Um, it's a lot of fun in hand. It's a fighting game, essentially, uh, but it's not like side, like side 2D, I guess, is the best way to describe it. You're flying around, you're grabbing energy, building up like this meter and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. I've done a review on it at Blistered Thumbs, so check that out if you haven't already. These are definitely must-haves if you own a PSP. Next, I wouldn't, uh, this is... A debate for me if this is my favorite PSP game or not, you're going to find out in the next video. Um, one of my favorite PS1 games of all time that got ported over, Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Line. It's more or less the same game as the PS1. Uh, it's got animated cutscenes now, they added two new characters, or two new classes, excuse me, the Onion Knight, Dark Knight. Uh, they added new special characters, they added um, Luso from the Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced series, and they added Balthier from Final Fantasy XII. Um, and there's probably something else I'm missing, but this is a jam-packed game great value. It's finally on the PSN, so if you have a PSP Go, you can finally get this game. Um, so yeah, one of my favorite games on the PSP, one of my favorite games of all time. Definitely need to buy it. Uh, not gonna lie, haven't even opened this up yet. Um, I got this with a bunch of other games for Christmas a few years ago, um, and it's probably terrible. <laughs> Never played it. Uh, I heard it was bad, but it's G.I. Joe on the PSP, so not only is it a movie tie-in game, but it's on a portable system, so there's no way it's good. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to lump 
these in together as well. God of War Ghost of Sparta and God of War Chains of Olympus. These are great, great, great games. If you are a fan of God of War games and you have PSP, you absolutely have to get these. These are a lot of fun. Um, they're, they keep the same action and, and it's just on a handheld. Same length, they're about six, seven hours. They're not as long, but they're still pretty long. Um, and yeah, they're great. If you like God of War, if you like action games, you gotta check it out. Um, all right, this is my last stack here we're moving to. This one, God's Eater Burst. Of all the Monster Hunter games that I've played, Lord of Arcana and Monster Hunter, this is my favorite, more action-oriented. Um, you don't have to choose a class or anything. Basically, you have these things called God Eaters, or God Arcs, or whatever, I forget what they're called. But basically, it's this gun that you have, and you can transform it into a melee weapon. Um, and it's all mission-based, you have a squad, you go around, you kill monsters, and... It kind of gets repetitive, but it's fun. So if you are trying to get into the whole monster hunting genre, and Monster Hunter is too slow paced, and Lord of Arcana is too slow paced, and just not enough variety, I think God's Eater Burst will hit the sweet spot for the American audience, so yeah, I'd, I'd recommend it. Next is an Atlas RPG. It's got to be good, right? Uh, Hexes Force. This is another game that Pito recommended. Uh, the only reason I even picked this up is because he said it's very rare and hard to get a hold of, and he was right. Um, although I feel foolish because I bought this game, and then like two days later, they released it on the PlayStation Network for like super cheap, like ten bucks. So I'm like, well, I just wasted my money. But I'm a collector. I love having the actual hard case version of it. So um, it's a lot of fun. It's got two stories in it. So there's the guy story and the girl story. So it kind of tells opposite ends of one overarching story. It's pretty easy. Uh, the story is relatively cliche. So if you play both of them, you're probably going to get thirty hours worth. So. If you like RPGs and you have PSP, I would definitely re recommend picking this up. Um, this game I have mixed feelings. When I initially heard about it, I was excited, but you play it and it's more the same. And that is Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Uh, if you have a PSP, I would definitely recommend getting it. It's one of the better games on the PSP. But I'm so, so, so sick of the spin-offs from Kingdom Hearts. I just want three. Um, none of these characters matter, although if I've heard right, these are the three characters in the secret ending of Kingdom Hearts 2 that stand in that field of keys. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Um, and it's Kingdom Hearts. There's no new worlds or anything like that, and the characters really aren't that interesting, but if you like Kingdom Hearts and you got a PSP, this is probably the best spin-off of all the Kingdom Hearts games, so take that for what it's worth. Uh, next, <laughs> I have mixed feelings on this too. This is Knights in the Nightmare. It's I don't even know how to describe this game. It's it's a strategy RPG, but you can't move your characters. So this was originally a DS game, and it totally shows. Um, basically, the way you do combat is you station your characters around the map before the battle starts, and you can't move them really. Um, so what you do is you click on them, you pick an attack, and then you have to like drag it. So it's obvious that this game was meant to, for a stylus. Um, it's really hard on the PSP, it's, they did their best to port it, but it's, I don't know, it's a really weird hybrid of different genres. Um, and on top of that, the story jumps all over the place, it tells the story from so many different perspectives that it's really hard to keep track of. Um, if you're looking for something unique, I'd try it out, but the learning curve is extremely difficult. It took me like five or six hours to figure out what I was doing in this game, so, uh, yep, just a little bit of caution. Next, uh, this looks funny because it was a used game and they didn't have the case for it. Um, that is Legend Heroes Song of the Ocean, uh, Legend Heroes 3. I played a tiny bit, I probably played two or three hours of this game. Um, if you like the Legend of Heroes series, you're gonna like this. The graphics are very good. It's like, sort of like, not quite PS1, not quite Super Nintendo graphics. It's that like really nice, polished sprite look. The music's good, it's got like a very musical theme, it's like got an ocean theme to it, so I love that. Um, haven't played, like I said, a whole lot of it, but if looking for an RPG on the PSP, can't go wrong with a Legend of Heroes game. Um, and here comes another Legend of Heroes game, it's Trails in the Sky. Loved, loved, loved this game, it's got a very crushing story, as the producers have said. It's a 40 hour game, and it's mainly the story, the bulk of the game. I mean, outside of running around and fighting battles and stuff, there's a lot of dialogue in this game, so your enjoyment of this game is going to largely hinge on whether you like the two characters, and I'm totally blanking, Estelle and Joshua. Um, so if you don't like them, you're probably not going to enjoy the game at all. Um, but it's more or less a turn-based RPG with 
kind of outdated graphics, but it's really fun. I enjoyed it a lot, and I can't wait for the sequel. They're working on it over at Xseed, um, so I can't wait for that. Definitely highly recommend this game. This one, this was Square Enix's attempt to jump on the Monster Hunter series, and that's Lord of Arcana. This is super, super, super repetitive. Like, they go to the same zones all the time, they use the same enemies all the time, They're, the item loadouts are very minimal. Um, I guess if you're a hard, hardcore Monster Hunter fan and you really want to try something different, I'd recommend it. Otherwise, I wouldn't waste your time, you're going to get bored real fast. Um, I think I gave this a 6, maybe a 5, when I reviewed it, it's, yeah, and it's, I'm sure it's super cheap because it really didn't sell well or I didn't get very good ratings, um, yeah, can't really recommend it to many people. Oh my god, I think this is my most hated game in my PSP collection, um, I looked at a bunch of different reviews up, I like the graphical style, and I thought, this could be fun, it's kind of got like a Tails battle system, that's Mid Mana, Ear Chronicle. Um, now it's got a very anime style, uh, the voice acting I think is pretty good, the music's pretty good, but here is what absolutely freaking kills it. The random battles are so frequent, it, they, are, they happen all the time, and when the battles do come up, the screen loads like a snail going up a tree in winter, man, like it's so slow. And then when you get to the battles, this girl, so you, the game's all about defending this girl, she won't move. Like, there's just like enemies like all over her and she won't move. And so it's it's kind of like a Tails game where it's real time, kind of like a fighting game, but you can move up and you can move sideways. So it's really hard to hit the enemies dead on. You miss a lot. And the it's a lot of just dungeon crawling with no mini maps. So you're like, where am I going? Where am I going? Uh, I cannot recommend this game. This is by far the worst game I have played. No, I can't say that. One of the worst games I've played that I have in my PSP collection. The worst game I'm going to get to in a sec, but yeah, cannot recommend this game. Uh, so when I went to Korea, I had a PSP and I'm like, okay, I'm going to research some of the highest rated PSP games. Crisis Core was one of them, the Castlevania uh, compilation pack was one of them, and here was another one at the time, Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. I tried to get it, can't do it. It's too slow paced for me, and when you're not playing with other people, it's not fun at all. Um, not my cup of tea. Japan goes crazy over it. I don't see the appeal at all, but not one of my favorite games. I really gave it the old college try, but I just couldn't get into it. Can't recommend it, really, either. Um, maybe it's your thing? I don't know. Not mine. <laughs> this is a, a staple of the PSP, uh, a franchise staple of the PSP. That I, This is my first entry into it. Heard about it at GDC, I got an early look at it, and I reviewed it, and I really enjoyed it. And this is Patapon 3. Um, it's a lot different than the other two. Instead of having a big tribe, you have a leader, and then you have three other guys. And so one's like a bow guy, one's a close range guy, and one's a mid range guy, and then you can pick what you want your guy to be. Do you want him to be the mid range guy, the long range guy, the tank in the front? So it's, it's a strategy rhythm game. So you have commands, um, so like attack, it's square, circle, circle, triangle, or whatever, and you have to do it to the beat. Um, very, very unique, very fun. You'll be sitting there bobbing your head. But you gotta wear headphones unless you're in a quiet spot. Um, very fun game, totally would recommend it if you have a PSP. Um, if you have a PSP and you don't have one of the Patapon games, you're missing out on one of the best series the system has to offer, so I would definitely check it out. This game, this has by far been the best game I've reviewed so far, best PSP game of the year so far. It's super amazing. I'm really glad that they did a remake of this. That's Tactics Ogre Let Us Cling Together. It's the spiritual predecessor, I guess, if you want to go backwards that kind of way, to Final Fantasy Tactics. It's a strategy RPG, but instead of having only six or seven guys, you can have up to twelve. So you have this, like, army, and battles can take hours, and loading out your guys' stats and gear can take hours. Um, but it's so much fun, it's so deep, and you can do so much stuff with it. And the story branches, you can pick how you want the story to affect. Like, uh, me and two other friends are playing at the same time. And we all had different stories going on, we all had different characters, so this will be different every time. It's deep, it's totally worth even paying full price right now. Um, I can't recommend this game enough, especially if you like strategy RPGs, an absolute must-have. Here is the worst game I have ever played on my PSP, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen for the PSP. 
It's terrible. You can't choose your transformers. You can't transform. You walk in a straight line, you kill stuff, you turn left, you shoot stuff, you sh turn straight again, you shoot stuff, next level. It's so boring, it's so repetitive, and it doesn't feel like Transformers at all. Can't remember, can't, I don't know, avoid this at absolute all costs. <laughs> uh, here's a game that I started, and I got really, really far, and I got stuck on a level, and I couldn't finish the game. Um, but it's still one of my favorites. I would like to go back maybe at some point and finish it, and I would hope that they bring number three over here, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen. That's Valkyria Chronicles 2. I know a lot of people are pissed off that this left the PlayStation 3 and went to the PSP, but personally, I think this kind of game works better on a handheld, uh, just in quick, short bursts. Um, load out your guys. It's a cool story. It's kind of got more of a goofy instead of a serious story. Um, but it's a lot of fun. It's a mix between a strategy and like a third-person shooter, I guess. Um, it's really cool. I would highly recommend picking this up if you have not already. Next, this is another contender for one of my favorite games on the PSP. Um, I originally reviewed, my very first game I reviewed at Blister Thumbs was Ease, or Isu, however you say it, The Oath in Felghana, and I had a lot of fun with that. But the game I had heard about a lot was this one, Isu 7. And I heard about it, never played it, everybody said this was the best one, and they were right. Basically, this is an action RPG, um, and it's a lot like all the other Ease games. They drop potions, you pick them up, basically you have a dash move, you have an attack move, and you, you can swap on the fly to any of your party members, so it's just a ton of fun. Like The, cliche, the, the story is pretty cliche, but... The action and the gameplay is totally where it's at. I can't recommend this game enough either. Isu 7 is absolutely fantastic. I played it, beat it in about 20 hours, and I was like, I wouldn't mind playing this game again. It's so much fun. If you have a PSP, this is a must, must have. Easily one of my top three favorite games of all time for the PSP. And last, but certainly not least, of uh, hard copies that I own, I'll get to, you know, PSN only. Um, this is a weird game. I've never played a roguelike RPG, as I guess these kind of games are called, where you're by yourself and you lose your items if you die, but you still gain levels. Uh, it's called ZHP Unlosing Ranger vs. Dark Death Evil Man. Another weird game by Nippon Ichi. Um, I kind of enjoyed it. Not really my thing, um, but if it is your thing, I think you'll enjoy it. It's just total slapstick fun, um, tongue-in-cheek. you got to just enjoy the silliness of it all. Basically, the unlosing ranger got hit by a car, needs somebody to replace him, and you're this guy, and you're a total loser. Um, and so you're in this like rogue-like maps. They're different levels, and you can outfit your guy however you want. I'm gonna get a drill arm, and I'm gonna have tank legs, and then I'm gonna have chicken hair or something. It's just wacky and fun. So if you like these rogue-like RPGs, I guess is what they're called. Um, I would recommend ZHP, but anybody else that's never played a game like this, it's gonna be weird at first, and you may not like it. So just a little bit of caution. Now, I have games on um, digital only just because when we got review copies, they didn't want to send us hard copies or whatever. Or I was in Korea and I didn't have access to hard copies and I just downloaded stuff off the PlayStation Network. So the two, uh, three I can think of, Isu, The Oath and Felghana, great game, would totally recommend it. Um, going back, I probably would have upped the score. <laughs> I gave it a seven, I think I would probably give it an eight. Now, uh, the story is not all there, the gameplay is there, just like E7, it's great. Um, another one is Prey 2, Dawn of Operation Panties Dude, which is a side-scrolling platform action game. Uh, it's really, really hard. That's probably one of the hardest games I've ever beat. Um, it's it, There's only like six or seven levels, but once you, the beginning levels are super easy. Um, it's like Mega Man, I guess. Yeah, that's an easy way to describe it. So you beat, play a level, beat a boss, then you go to the next one. Um, but as you go to each level, they progressively get harder. And I know this because I started over and played the levels in a different order, and the difficulties are different every time. So sometimes there's twins, but next time there'll be triplets uh, for the bosses. So it's different every time. Really hard. If you like a challenge, um, I would recommend trying it out. If you don't like hard games, it's probably something you want to avoid because it's going to frustrate you a lot. Um, but it's another Nippon Ichi game that the humor is just totally weird and fun. Um, and then the last game that I can think of that I have on the PlayStation Network that is not a PS1 classic is uh, Lunar Silver Star Story Complete, or Harmony of Silver Star, that's what it's called. 
that was my game of the year for PSP 20, uh, 2010. It was, it's a remake of Lunar, which has been remade a million and a half times. I don't know why they don't make Lunar 3. Um, probably because working design doesn't exist anymore. But um, it's a remake, graphical uh, facelift. It looks great. I think they may or may not have redone the voices. Wouldn't be uh, surprised if they did. Um, enhanced the music. The battles are a little different. It's just a great turn-based RPG. If you grew up in the PlayStation 1 era of turn-based RPGs, you're gonna love this game. Totally fun. Totally recommend it. Like I said, it was my number one favorite game of 2000, 2010 on the PSP. Um, so that's it, guys. Those are my PSP games. And like I said, um, I wanted to give you an introduction of what I have because next time you might be thinking, well, what are your favorite games? Or if I could only get a couple games, what would you recommend? Well, next time um, I'm gonna do my top 10 favorite PSP games and you can just figure it out from there. We'll go from there and you can see if you agree with me. So let me know what you thought about these games. I know there's a lot. Um, tell me some of your favorite PSP games. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.